Hello and welcome to my channel. For those of y'all who don't know me, I'm a personal trainer, yoga instructor, and I come on here to athletic hauls, reviews, workouts, and now I do these kind of sit down talking kind of videos. And if y'all like these types of videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that y'all won't miss any of my videos in the future. The house that I currently live in, it doesn't have the best lighting ever. So unfortunately I will not be doing a what I eat in a day vlog type video. That's why I don't really upload a lot of vlog types because I just don't like how um, the video looks in dark lighting. So I'm just gonna be filming like a sit down talking video, but I will say I will make this as condensed as I possibly can because I wanna get straight to the point. I don't wanna be talking forever on here. So I wanna make this as condensed as I can. Before I studied nutrition dietetics in school, I actually had my own nutritionist. I hired a nutritionist when I was 17 years old because I did pageants and that's how I basically dived myself into the nutrition world and got myself more interested in how to basically control my life and my dieting at the time when doing pageants I had to look a certain way. You know, so I had a lot of struggles growing up with a lot of food and that led to a lot of anxiety. Um, and my eating disorder. But anyways, that is in the past. If y'all are interested in my story, I will be talking about it at a later time or y'all can look it up. I have a video a long, long time ago that I made about my eating disorder story. But anyways, why I wanted to be a vegan slash plant-based eater in the first place is because of my love for animals. And then the second reason is because of the articles that I've just put up out there um, because I believe that being plant-based is one of the healthiest lifestyles and diet nutrition that y'all can have in today's world because our food system is just kind of questionable and I don't trust a lot of what people are doing out there in the world to our food, especially meat products. So that is why I choose not to eat meat and I am a plant-based trainer and athlete and I have been for the past almost 10 years now. I just want to say this though, there are a lot of pros and cons to being a plant-based eater, but I just want to share my main things or main points that I want to talk about in this video is basically how to combat deficiencies and how to basically be aware of your food intake, nutrition, vitamins, all that good stuff. So I used to use my fitness pal a long time ago, over 10 years ago now, but I actually have switched to chronometer.com. If y'all don't know what that is, I seriously recommend every single person to look it up if y'all are into you know tracking your food and all that. Again, I personally, now that I've done food tracking and nutrition for such a long time, over 10 years now because I have been competing. So from that time, from when I was like 17, um, I basically was obsessed with tracking my food and everything or actually before I was 17 I actually started tracking my food when I was like 13 14 because I was modeling Anyways, so I do not recommend for everyone to do that But again, if y'all are new to nutrition and want to just have an overall paint a picture of what y'all are getting I highly recommend chronometer.com. I am not sponsored. I am I have never been sponsored by chronometer.com the reason why I choose them over other sites like MyFitnessPal is because chronometer.com actually talks about vitamins, nutrition, um, in a more holistic way because it talks about not just calories and, you know, the macros. It goes way deeper than that. It goes into vitamin A, how much percentage of our foods are we taking in from, you know, this source and how much vitamin C you're getting, how much vitamin K, E you're getting from what you're tracking and logging into your diary. So that is why I highly recommend. And they also have, of course, like other sites out there, the water intake. So y'all can kind of make sure that y'all are getting enough hydration, water, all that good stuff. One of the main deficiencies being a plant-based eater is not protein. A lot of people think that protein is something that we de are depleted as vegans, vegetarians, plant-based people, we don't get enough protein. Of course, people who eat meat are gonna have all the essential amino acids just from taking in from animal products, but as vegetarian, plant-based people and vegans, we can basically complement our foods, meaning we can, for example, get the essential amino acids that we need by pairing certain foods together. The most common one that I recommend for myself also, but for any of my plant-based clients is to complement rice and beans. And probably a lot of people know this by now, especially if y'all are vegetarian plant-based people, but 
um, basically complementing those two will get a lot of your essential amino acids that is necessary for our bodies. So complementation is so important for our bodies because of that reason. So that is how we get enough of our essential amino acids as plant-based eaters. Huge deficiency that also goes around for people who don't eat meat is vitamin B12 deficiency. And how I combat that is basically adding in nutritional yeast to my food products and my intake and my everyday lifestyle. So that's how I combat vitamin B12 deficiency. Um, but again, everyone's gonna have different methods and ways to combat deficiencies. But again, the main, main thing that I recommend for all my clients who are plant-based is to basically track your food until you get comfortable and feel that you're confident to meet the needs that you need without even tracking. And that's how I do it. When I was competing, I definitely measured every single ounce, every single gram I had of my food. I kid you not, it was an obsession to a point where it became a very unhealthy obsession. That's why I'm so passionate now to not track my food because I don't want to fall into that hole again. It's so easy to fall into a hole, especially when you're competing. Um, and of course, if y'all are competing out there and really need, you know, deadlines and things like that, of course, you'll need to track your food in a very intense way. But for me personally, I coming out of that, I don't recommend my clients to measure every single ounce or anything like that. But in the beginning, if y'all are struggling to, for example, if losing your weight is a big goal of yours, that's when I would come in and say, hey, um, let's go ahead and just measure out what we're eating just for a single day. I wouldn't tell them to do it for long periods of time because I just don't think that's sustainable. And also mentally, that's not healthy for us. So for me personally, I will only do it on a case to case basis, but I just want to say that those kind of things are important because just so we can establish a ground base of what you're eating, what you're not eating, what you need, what you don't need. So things like that. Another topic is gaining muscle. How I went from 120 pounds to now 100 and almost 150 pounds is basically by gaining muscle, gaining healthy weight. And I did that by basically bulking. And when I say bulking, I don't mean stuffing like 20 donuts down my face or eating like fast food unhealthy bulking but i mean bulking as in increasing an amount of calories per day i don't have a formula to throw in the world out there because it's going to depend on your body weight your height your gender your lifestyle your you know diet what you eat and what you don't eat so it just really depends so that's why i recommend a website which i will link in the description down below as well for those who want to go deep into how many grams of you know protein do i need per day so it's going to break down a general guide for y'all even that website that i do throw out in the description is not going to be like a hundred percent accurate of course it's not like a hundred percent accurate because of the fact that it's just a calculation average estimate of what is known to be kind of the overall goal but again, for bulking, leaning, and things like that, it's gonna depend on specific needs and nutrition. So again, I can't say on camera when people ask me, oh, like how many grams of protein do you take and blah, 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 because I don't have an answer for that because every day is different. My lifestyle is very, depending upon, you know, different variables. So I don't, I probably don't eat the same exact grams per day, like on the dots. I just don't believe in you know hitting certain numbers unless you know you're competing for example but again that's why i recommend that website so much because it gives you an overall estimate of what you should be getting per your specific composition <laughs> and naturally i do believe that our bodies will also let us know and some people are going to say this is bs but it's really true we can't just go off of a governmental website and just say oh okay like this is amount of you know, grams is an amount of this, this, this that we need per for, I don't know, age 26 female and, you know, this weight, blah, blah, blah. Because at the end of the day, there's really no number that can really say that you need something. But at the end of the day, your body is the number one indicator. Getting a blood sample and tests also helps if you're deficient in anything. A lot of studies also recently showed that eating something high in carbs in the morning is not healthy. So it's ideal to eat something 
with high protein. So eating something with beans for me, for example, I would eat a lot of like sandwiches that I made that I have hummus in, I have beans in it, I have veggies. So that's kind of like my staple breakfast if I had to eat breakfast at this moment. But that is something that I have also been very, very conscious of because again, science is ever evolving, ever changing. So even if something has been proved 10 years ago, five years ago, even a year ago, it can change again this year or this moment because we found a new study and there is a new study showing this and this. So for me personally, I'm always educating myself because even if I make this video today and I share with y'all what I've been doing these past couple years, it might change in the next you know months, even years because science is ever evolving. As a plant-based eater, it is also very challenging, especially in the modern world because nowadays as someone who is plant-based, there are so many processed products and I hate to say this but it's like a lot of processed junk out there <laughs> probably gonna get a lot of hate for that but whatever a lot of processed stuff out there that I don't believe in so I recently have eliminated a lot of toxic products out of my life I have tried to limit the um, intake of processed foods including fast food I don't eat fast food I haven't eaten fast food for a long time but when I say fast food, for me, it also includes eating out. So I actually limit the amount of takeouts that I do. So I haven't taken out anything for about a month now, and I'm very proud of it because I've been trying to cook more at home. I've been trying to know what goes in my food so that extra stuff won't go in there. So I've been making everything scratch. So if y'all have been following me on Instagram, y'all already know what I'm talking about. I have been making a lot of like Mexican inspired foods. They're not authentic Mexican. I've lived in Texas, so I know what authentic Mexican is and it's not my food because <laughs> there's a lot of animal products used in Mexican, traditional Mexican food. Again, it's inspired by the Mexican influence and flavors, but it's not authentic because if you know, you know. But anyways, um, I just wanna say also I eat a lot of Thai food. Again, any kind of food is great, but I just, don't eat a lot of process. So I used to, like 10 years ago when I first started my vegetarian vegan journey, I ate a lot of like processed cheese that was not cheese. I ate a lot of processed like meats, like fake meats. I ate a lot of like just like made stuff that isn't necessarily good for our bodies. Maybe the one processed item that I eat a lot recently or just in general, my whole you know, plant-based life is tempeh. I eat that a lot because I really love tempeh because it's processed. It's probably not the best thing for our body, but it is better in my opinion than getting, you know, like processed meat that is, you know, fake. But I do eat that time to time just because I have cravings. But this isn't something that I eat all the time because I know it's not as healthy for me and it's not like real protein. I do eat a lot of tofu. There's gonna be a lot of controversy about this topic because a lot of people don't believe in soy products in the United States, but I personally, that's how I get my protein intake in addition to beans and um, complementation for the rice. And also I eat a lot of veggies and people might actually not know this, but veggies has a lot of protein in it. And we have a lot of phytonutrients, a lot of nutrients that are not found in meat products. I mean, there's pros and cons, right? Of vegetarian plant foods because there's pros and cons for that. And then there's pros and cons for meat as well because now meat is proved to be carcinogenic, not the actual meat product, but the way we're transforming our meat from the animal to the product is a lot of harmful chemicals and that is known to be carcinogenic. Again, it's not the actual food. I just wanna make that straight, that point straight, and it's actually how we process things. But again, if y'all have your own farm, and this is what I like to tell my clients as well. If y'all own your own farm, you you know ethically kill your animals and things like that, and that's what you eat, then that's a different story versus getting something from the store or going to Chick-fil-A and getting, you know, like a processed chicken sandwich. It's totally different. Also, my point is it's not exactly healthy to eat processed vegan vegetarian foods from the grocery store as well. And that's why I have taken it upon myself to really cook at home to make a lot of just you know basic meals that y'all can make at home with just a simple ingredients meal prepping has also been something that has been helping me a lot and when y'all have some time i highly recommend whether you're plant-based whether you're not 
to always meal prep and that's not every single time of course life gets in the way so that's why for me not only do I do it myself but also I use a website called mega fit meals that I order from again I am not sponsored I basically do not have a lot of sponsorships so these are basically my experience and what I do in my past especially when I'm busy I like to order from clean ingredient companies again I emphasize clean because not every single company meal prep company in the world is clean so that's how I get my clean and ensure that my food is clean so that's what I use but if I have the time myself I do it myself so I would get like a lot of containers I would grab you know my rice I would do my protein I would do my veggies and I mean in the past I have measured all of my stuff out but I don't do that anymore because I don't compete anymore even though this is not an official way of measuring your food I've learned in school actually y'all can use the palm of your hand to measure out your protein intake and that's not official again I don't do that all the time I've kind of just learned how to remember things by measuring things in the past so that's how I learned but again that's a I think that's a good recommendation I don't know I haven't really used it as much but again that is something that they recommended but again it's just something that I learned I think it's a good way to get into the starting point of knowing visually how much your body needs for your life and your food intake of course nutrition is so important when talking about weight loss when talking about reaching your goals but i also want to finally just mention something real quick is sleep so if y'all have not considered sleeping or getting enough sleep i'm sorry to say that of course fitness and diet as much as those two things are very very important i mean i would say diet is probably the num one of the number one things ever that is very important to reach your goals but I would say sleep. I feel like a lot of people forget about sleep and I just want to remind y'all to get enough sleep because if y'all don't get enough sleep, it does translate into our mental health as well. And also your body just wants to, because it's so tired, it won't be able to perform well. It won't be able to basically absorb the nutrients that we need, especially when we're sleeping. And so a lot of the times, so sometimes we feel more bloated than usual because our bodies are just so fatigued and tired. So we hold on to excess body weight or excess fluids. So that's one thing. Another thing is that when we're really tired and not sleeping, enough we tend to eat a lot more so that's another thing if y'all are trying to lose weight all right well that is it for this video today i hope y'all enjoyed it again i didn't want to make this video super super long so if y'all enjoyed it and y'all want to know more about something message me um comment in the description down below if y'all would like me to answer some of your questions and until my next one i hope y'all have a wonderful day bye y'all